What I'd like to do in this process is test the user interface, the GUI. So this is the turning point in this process to where I will start focusing more on the graphical user interface. And so I have the visualizer here that outputs the feeds in a command line interface. And so that worked well as we saw in the previous video. So I want to set the startup project in Visual Studio to the GUI and I want to run it. So, um, so we're going to build it, we're going to run it and see how it performs, right? Um, I do want to scan the code a little bit and make sure that uh, everything looks looks decent to me and in this process it does right and whenever I get engaged with a user interface I want to make sure I'm familiar with it as much as possible so that as I'm working through it I can more quickly connect what I see on the screen to what's actually running behind the scenes right and this project, so I haven't touched the user interface uh, side of this uh, in a little while. I think it's been a few months. It may have been a few months, I'm, I'm not really sure. But um, it, has the, it has the setup from when I had the user interface connected directly to a local instance of SQL Server. And I am now using SQL Lite and I don't want to actually access SQL Server uh, in the near future or in the far future, right? So SQL Server is now out of the picture and I don't need the things in the project related to SQL Server. So I'm going to, I started out saying, okay, I'll just remove this and I'll just remove that, this piece of thing. Like here, I have some redundancies here now with what I now have implemented in the behind the scenes API as far as like uh, column names and that sort of thing. Then when I looked at this connection string, I was like, you know what, maybe I could still use that. But then when I thought about it, I was like, you know what, um, properties, the way it showed there uh, is, is kind of a, a, a done deal now. It's, 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 gone, it's going away, it's gone away. And I don't really need to do that. Neither do I need to do these config sections because you know the .NET world is evolving away from those sorts of things anyway. So let me just go ahead and start cutting a lot of this stuff out, uh, removing this stuff, and I just, um, decided to just go ahead and delete delete or remove either one sufficed right uh, these items from uh, this particular user interface project in Visual Studio before I got uh, before I went too much further in this process and so um, I was actually pleased to have done that because you know one of the reasons why I wanted to do SQLite instead of SQL Server is that SQLite is smaller faster n more nimble right and it's also easy to deploy you can deploy the SQLite database right with the software program far easier than you can do um, the embedded versions of um, SQL Server what was that SQL Server CE or something like that or anyway it doesn't matter at this point but now that I got rid of the last vestiges of SQL Server I now have um, you know, SQLite um, fully fully uh, incorporated into the code base here for the user interface. And so I kept the actual API that the user interface had used to indirectly access SQL Server. I kept that in place. I didn't make any changes, right? That would have that would negatively affect or not so much negatively, but you know, cause um, more changes to the user interface and um, I was successful in this this transition right um, here this is just a, um, a indication that uh, not all the data was pulled back from the RSS feed the way that I was accustomed to when I was using SQL Server and so now that I'm using SQL Lite I can make some tweaks and start to get um, the data to show on the screen more close to the way it is with the C++ version of the program that I developed in the Linux environment, right? So we're pretty close here, and we've made some good progress, but yet there's, there's more progress um, to go. And so 
I spent a lot of time here tweaking the central logic here for the UI when it comes uh, to determining which data values to, um, to actually use and bind to the user interface. And so I found that to be a very um, instructional process, a, a very insightful process in terms of what I am growing to understand about the RSS process and the RSS implementation. And so I am seeing a little bit more um, more, more uh, expression in the user interface in terms of the data values and what's being shown and what's being presented here. But I want to see more. And some of the feeds, the data that they've brought back in a way that the program that I've written is, has interpreted that data is doing a good job in presenting on the screen. Also, I wanted to do my resize test. Um, since I'm running in debug, debug mode in Visual Studio, it tends to slow things down versus when you run it directly outside of Visual Studio. So I did want to do that. I just, you know, I got to satisfy that curiosity. You know that, that screen resize, that, that is uh, quintessential uh, to my earliest blog posts on user interface development. Um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, have been my foundation is setting up windows, right? Setting up uh, windowed GUI applications, right? When it comes to uh, Linux software development. And so um, just doing that in Windows is pretty, pretty keen. But um, I see that when you do the release mode of this uh, program, it, ru it runs more smoothly, right? I do see some um, video game level tearing when resizing it, right? And um, yeah. To me, that just signals that WPF is probably on its way out, and uh, we've seen the last days of WPF. Um, but for now, it's a good platform for exercising the software development concepts and seeing uh, what we can do to expand and explore the way we process data from different data sources. So. Once again, I am pleased with the progress that's being made here, and I'm going to commit some of this to the Git repository, because like I said in a couple of videos back, during this process, I have leaned more in the direction of more frequent Git commits so that I can document the process, not necessarily using Git as a way to recover back to an earlier state and time, although that is uh, quintessentially the, the most profound aspect of Git, right? Um, that's the most profound aspect of Git, is to be able to recover back to an earlier state, or at least to be able to review that earlier state. But I am using Git, in this particular case, more as documentation, so that I can go back and look and see what the case is on some of these um, codes, some of these projects, some of these processes, and some of these components that are um, in the overall um, solution that, that is set up here, um, in this case for visual, using Visual Studio. By the way, um, I'm pretty stoked about uh, what's called .NET MAUI, M-A-U-I, um, the multi-platform application user interface, and uh, C Sharp Dev Kit. I've heard about C Sharp Dev Kit and the integration of C Sharp Dev Kit with Visual Studio Code. And depending on how things evolve, I may personally move away from Visual Studio Community Edition and switch over to Visual Studio Code. I haven't done that yet, but if I do do that, then this particular project that I'm working on here will be the last project that I use Visual Studio um, Community or Professional Edition with. Unless, of course, you know, I'm doing it as part of a day job and they uh, require Visual Studio community or professional or enterprise. That's cool. But for my own personal stuff, if I touch uh, the Microsoft uh, frameworks and stacks, then I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio Code, C Sharp Dev Kit, and some other stuff if I decide to go that way. Check out the GitHub snapshot for more details.